Uh, this came out uh, in 2018. It is called The Trump Prophecy. And it is based on the absolutely true story of the prophecies given to a retired firefighter who in 2011 was given a message by God that uh, Donald Trump is the man to be our president in these troubled times. And he told everyone about it after Trump became president. <laughs> yeah, that's also true. Uh, but no, I mean, like the people who are vouching for him are, of course, his doctor uh, and, and his wife. We'll get, we'll get into that later. It's, I'm just going to read the description here. It says, The Trump prophecy witnessed the incredible true story of one man's personal journey to healing that led an international prayer movement. The Trump prophecy is a gripping drama that delivers an, an inspirational message if hope and patriotism. That is a, an actual typo. God, somebody read this book and said, that's brilliant. I want to put money up so that we can bring this to the big screen. It's that easy to be like Norm MacDonald in that SNL skit on the Christian Jeopardy and just say, oh, yeah, Trump predicted that. Yep. Uh, God, is, yeah, talk to me. This is based on a book called The Trump Prophecies, The Astonishing True Story of the Man Who Saw Tomorrow and What He Says is Coming Next. In November 2016, the world witnessed the impossible. Nearly every household in America tuned in to the electoral feeds and every update pointed to a loss for the Republican Party. They were watching the live stream of our uh, live show. I want to be in one of these movies, like just us on stage tugging our collars while like just some uh, some fucking dipshit is hooting with his wife. But when that map of states flipped red in the final hour, there were a select few who weren't surprised. They had always known Trump was going to win. He was chosen for such a time as this. The prophecy had said so. The prophet, this reserved man of God, was retired firefighter Mark Taylor. The word given by the Holy Spirit was delivered on April 28, 2011, in the middle of the most debilitating sickness a man could ever experience, uh, diarrhea. He was, he was having <laughs> diarrhea. Um, uh, when the prophecy later fell into the hands of New York Times bestsellers Don and Mary Colbert, God used this new team of passionate individuals to lead the nation into a fervent prayer chain that would accomplish one of the most incredible miracles our country has ever seen. And this is the film adaptation. This is not a documentary. This is a like a, a made to be a feature film, a feature style uh, motion picture with actors portraying Mark Taylor and uh, Don and Mary Colbert. And the story of how, again, an unassuming retired firefighter suffering from PTSD was given um, a message from God that Donald Trump was destined to be our 45th president. I, okay, so my big, my big takeaway from now having just watched 90 minutes, two hours of this movie, is President Xi must take over America. China must, must take over America. I realize that I will probably be killed in that, but... I'll, I will be sent to a re-education camp or just die in the first wave and say, take over New York City. That's fine. But sh we need to treat evangelical Christians in America like China treats um, uh, Falun Gong members. Don't get no, no Caparino. I know that's controversial, but I think they have the right idea, maybe the wrong group of people. Well, hang on, Will. I think you could be a Mandarin. I think you'd, you'd probably do well on the tests. Uh, you could have a... You know, be some sort of regional bureaucrat. I mean, that'd be great with me. That is like, that's how the Maneker family story continues. And then like fucking 80 years from now, when you're like your grand, great grandkids have a podcast in, you know, new China, they're like, Oh look, uh, their dad took the Mandarin test. He was a turncoat <laughs> and, uh, just, it continues <laughs> in the family. But I mean, I guess we have to talk a little bit about like the actual narrative of this movie. Which well, there's is, not much. Okay, so it's about a guy who witnesses one fire in his two decades of firefighting. And the first 10 minutes of this movie contain about five scenes of crying from this guy and his friends. I have to say, like the aesthetic of this movie was like incredibly sort of minimalist cinema in that, you know, almost like 2001, the first 10 to 15 minutes, there are absolutely no dialogue whatsoever. And then even after that, there are long stretches of the movie of just a man staring at a digital alarm clock with no sound or words at all. This was a Dog Me 95 movie. <laughs> yeah, and, it's, uh... it's the first five minutes of the movie are just silent footage of fire trucks going by, like in Manos, The Hands of Fate. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, they're so... This guy, our hero, the guy who's the Trump prophecy, he just can't sleep because he keeps dreaming about a fire. And, you know, you would say you picked the wrong job, buddy. But wouldn't you know it? He's going to retire. And there are two scenes of him 
having the exact same conversation with the fire chief about retiring and they both cry during it. And I have to say, these guys are the biggest fucking pussies in the world. This guy is quitting his fucking job as a firefighter in a small town that experiences a one alarm fire every 15 years. And they're just fucking weeping. They're acting like they're in Delta Force. Yeah, the uh, uh, chief tries to dissuade him from leaving, saying, you know, if you stay another five years, your pension is fully vested. And I was like, no. He's I'm like, out, no, my, no, I'm we, out of the game. We live in Bedford, Missouri. My house is forty seven dollars. <laughs> so the uh, actually, I just want to go back to the very beginning and the opening credits. The the first words that are spoken in this movie are just like uh, again, it's like you see fire and their credits are rolling. You're not looking at anything but fire and like you know, executive produced by the Liberty University Cinematic Arts Center. And then you just hear a disembodied voice say, "As Benjamin Netanyahu is to Israel." so too is this man to the United States of America. Then we cut to, you know, uh, they're, they're, it's in, you know, a small town in, in like a meth den or something. A, a junkie drops their Zippo and uh, causes a fire in like a, a you know, a two-story suburban house. And then our main character, Mark Taylor, the prophet, is, you know, springs out of bed in the firehouse so they all sleep in bunk bed, like race car bunk beds. And he has to be like, he's fallen asleep with the Bible on his chest and he like springs out of bed. The Bible hits the floor. And then he goes to encounter this like a traumatic fire that, as Felix said, a one alarm fire that like, again, he's been a firefighter for 20 years. This is the first burning building he's gone into and he like completely loses his shit. He, this guy, as a fire survivor myself. <laughs> yeah, you can say it. Yeah, I have a little trouble sleeping, but my nightmares are more like, you know, I have this horrible nightmare where I have a small dick where it's only eight inches <laughs> and everyone laughs at me <laughs> or, you know, I'm not a New York Times bestseller. I've never written a documentary or I'm not. I'm never made the champions division of Fortnite and not some bitch ass dream about a fire. But this guy can't stop having him. He it's can't stop having them. And he. The most offensive thing about these home scenes, he sleeps in what I could best characterize as smaller than a twin bed with his long suffering <laughs> wife. And all he does is toss and turn and then go to his smaller bed. <laughs> and every night his poor wife is like, oh, no, honey, you're having the fire nightmare again. And it's like, this is the most patient wife in the world. It, it's, I, they have, it's clear they have like a sexless and childless marriage. So it's like, I don't even know what's going on. I mean, I don't even. They're like roommates, basically. Yeah. They're roommates who sleep in the same bed. And, it, and like, okay, so he experiences one fire in his two decade career of being a firefighter, completely loses his shit, and is like, I'm taking four months off. I'm taking up all my sick leave that I've banked. I'm taking four months off, and then I'm retiring January 1st. And that then, wasn't supposed to be part of the job. You never said there'd be fire involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it, and then also, we learned that his, his long suffering wife was the fire dispatcher. And she's just like the firehouse secretary. She just calls them. She's like, got a fire for you, hon. Well, that's like, well, so that's a recurring theme in this movie. In, I guess this is a thing in middle America. If you have a job, your wife is like, your wife has to come with you to the job to be like a <laughs> lower station than you, but work with you on the job. This plays, we'll talk about the doctor later on, but there's a similar scenario. that go, Though the doctor's wife is significantly more powerful yeah. than him. I oh, yeah. Say. But uh, so... He enjoys his retirement, which is they go to the one lake in fucking hog shit, Missouri, <laughs> and they're, they fish and don't catch anything. They suck. Like, you'd figure people from that part of the country would be better at fishing. They don't accomplish a thing. Uh, they throw a frisbee at each other. <laughs> <laughs> they just literally, this is like a dog directing a movie about people again. It's well, like, oh, yeah, they're going to do that. People, th like, a dog would literally think, like, <laughs> when people leave the house without him, they're like, oh, they're going to throw the frisbee without me. This fucking sucks. Uh, it's a, yeah, Felix is it's, referencing my, this is, this is actually my favorite part of the movie. During his four month break from his traumatic fire encounter, uh, he's like I need to you know spend some quality time with the wife and it's just like they go to the park throw a frisbee around then ride a Ferris wheel together and they're very happy but he but like he still keeps having PTSD nightmares about a fire well it's no longer a fire it oh, becomes a demon it, oh, well, okay his nightmare is the fire is given flesh and literally like he's lying in bed with sleep paralysis thinking that the like the you know rafters of his bedroom are on fire and then like the fire like forms into like a D an Obama looking demon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, let me be clear. 
Uh, if you like your house, it's going to burn down. <laughs> uh, n- nice wall. Let's put some Korans in that bookshelf. <laughs> Uh, so uh, you didn't put that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, another another element of his retirement is that he's going to spend all this time um, uh, rehabbing his 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 father's boat. And there's one scene where he's like, it's all like broken down and shitty, and he's got to like you know repaint it and you know just get a new new engine, new outboard motor or whatever. And on his father's boat, his fishing boat, is a Reagan Bush '84 bumper sticker. And I just love the idea of putting a bumper sticker on a boat, like. <laughs> You might as well put a confession to a crime on the back of the boat. <laughs> no one's ever going to see that. I can't stress Fucking this enough simpleton. that the first 45 minutes of this film, all that happens is he quits his job and he plays Frisbee with his wife and he has dreams. <laughs> and this scene, these three scenes just recur over and over again. We describe, yeah, the first 45 minutes of the movie, we, like, you got it exactly right, Felix. You described, or Virgil, you said it's like if someone tried to film or make it a film adaptation of a John Kasich rambling anecdote <laughs> yeah, about, like, you know, you know like, oh, why, oh, wait, why did my dad have a boat? Oh, and, you know, some people have boats, son. There's this baffling scene <laughs> where he's he's looking at old photographs of his dad while he's on the boat, and then, you know, we, we see what's going on in his head, and it's just an old man with a young girl like a child on the boat and was he supposed to be the young girl in this story like that's a sepia tone john Kasich, you know yeah. holes in the brain yeah. so yeah uh so far it's been a story about um the world's most bitch-ass firefighter uh who suffers brutal ptsd from seeing fighting one fire who goes home to sleep in a tiny bed in a sexless marriage with his wife the fire dispatcher <laughs> And then there are numerous scenes that are just repeated. It's sort of existential. They repeat the same scene of him talking to the fire f- chief about his pension. And there are multiple scenes of him taking framed pictures off a wall and putting them into a box. But he's like, take, he retired from being a firefighter. And there's a scene of him in his house taking down all the photos of him being a firefighter and putting them in a box. Because I guess like he can't look at them now or something. Uh, this is it's, there's also, it's and, and then also keep in mind that like while this is happening, there's no dialogue or, or even sound at some point. So it's he's just, troubled by uh, these dreams, uh, and you know he talks to his wife about them. And his wife says, "Honey, have you considered praying?" And this is a trope you see in all of these movies where the wife is just very wise and says, uh, "You know, have you heard of the Bible?" Which makes no sense because you see him read the Bible in the first fucking scene, and he goes, uh, "Prayer? What's that?" Just well, it's like no, talking says, to God. No, he said, "Like, I, he's like, I, I feel like I can't pray. Like, he reads the Bible, but he feels like he's he's cut off from a personal relationship with God." And his wife tells him, "Like, praying is just like having a conversation with yourself, but you're talking to God." Or no, she says, "It's just like having a conversation, but you're talking to God." Yeah, the, shouldn't he know this by now? That's kind of like the first thing you learn. Like yeah, they want to being a Christian, and like we said, when we were watching the sequence of uh, him and his wife playing frisbee and sitting on a dock together, we were like, "Is this why all of these people like for this demographic? Is this why they're all into QAnon? Because it's like the only yes. interesting, okay. fun thing." So here's and, my like, point. Like, first off, uh, like his imagination of what life is is just uh, sitting on a boat. Like he looks like the avatar of every person who's screaming at Ilan Omar on Twitter, or Colin Kaepernick. And uh, the thing is, like he, you know, he he doesn't uh, uh, stay long enough at the fire department to to get his pension fully vested. So he essentially retires early. He doesn't look that old. He's like probably late forties at most. No, he looks like my age, dude. Like he, he like this guy retired in his thirties. And all he think, well, he retires, and he thinks, well, all right, what am I gonna do with uh, the rest of my life now? Well, I'm gonna fix up the boat and uh, we'll throw the frisbee at the lake with the wife. Uh, but he can't even do that. And it's like, you know, he he stays up all night because he's having these horrible dreams. You know, wife's ready to go to the lake, you know, day two of retirement. Can't even do that. The movie's depiction of what that life is like, uh, you know, after you stop working and have someone to tell you what to do, uh, is so bleak to me that no wonder all of these people became posters. Like, no wonder they all just got into QAnon shit and MAGA shit. Like, why not? What else are you going to do? And that's exactly what he does. He starts posting. But like uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a physical journal, though. It's not yeah. like he doesn't share it with the internet initially. Not yet, He yeah. starts writing down all his dreams in a journal. And then like, you know, I think at one point they recommend that he go on antidepressants. And I swear to God, and then he's like, at one, they put him on SSRIs 
And then at one point, like he wakes up in the middle of a cold sweat and he's like, I'm not taking the pills anymore. And Felix is like, yes. Well, yeah, no, yes. I, I look, I have my problems with the politics of this movie, but it's overall message that SSRIs are bad because they'll prevent you from having the Trump prophecy <laughs> yeah. is true. It is the truth. This has been studied in medical journals. Zero percent of people who take SSRIs have had the Trump prophecy. But what, what I, Zero. What I find, what I find interesting, yeah, what I find interesting is that the guy who plays the lead role of Mark Taylor it seems like him, the actor, like as a person, was like I don't know, just like whacked out on like he just like has no affect, like he's just like the the blankest person. He, like, he can't. He's like he's like the prototype of a guy who like kills the mayor of his town <laughs> because he like he just he thought he thought God was talking to him. Like that's the exact type of guy who's like they'll be like one of those states you never hear about, they'll be like, do you know the governor of Arkansas died in a sword attack in 2011? <laughs> You'd be like, what the fuck? And it's just a totally flat person like that killed him. So yeah, he's uh, not doing shit, doesn't have a job, spends all day looking at a digital alarm clock and having nightmares about a fire demon slash Muhammad. It's sort of like a Muslimic yeah, style he's a, now the, the Muslimic The Muslimic people, they have a strong spiritual connection to fire and they can project these into the dream realm. If you do not pray, the prayer is the prayer is like a border wall between your dreamland and Muhammad. Dream warriors. Oh, at one point he does encounter an angel that appears to him like an orb. I will say that, a, no, that's biblically correct. Mm -hmm. That was surprisingly biblically correct for evangelicals. I was very proud of them. That is how angels... What, depicting angels just like a glowing orb? In the light. Bible, that's what they are. They're yeah. just like glowing. They're orbs. They're orbs? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, that's that's how angels be. When do they when did they start describing angels as having like wings and halos and shit? After like, and you harps. guys picked up all that Roman bullshit. <laughs> so okay, at this point though, he uh, his wife suggests that you know finally that you know he see a doctor, and then like there's a scene of him seeing his. It's not really clear. He's seeing like his doctor slash pastor. And it seems like he's getting cat yeah, scan he goes results. To, he talks to the doctor and says, oh, you know, we, uh, we just got your test results in and, uh, you know, you, you're low T. Uh, <laughs> no, he says that you have the hormones of a 70-year-old. So he's like extremely T depleted. Uh, but, but, but so this have never you, uh, comes, this never, by the way, there's never a callback to his T levels again <laughs> in the movie. There's just a one-off scene where his doctor pastor is like, yeah, dude, you're a fucking pussy. Oh, he also said your adrenal gland is like depleted, so he yeah. needs some of that that cheese pizza adrenochrome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then he, and then he, and we're trying to figure out who this guy is because he's just a guy in a suit and well, not, not is, as like, good. It's office. not a doctor's office. It looks like it's like a it looks like a minister's office, with right? The, and the then, dark wood. And, and then he says, books uh, and shit. "You know, have you considered praying? It's just like talking to God." But like, oh, you let know, me write you a prescription for twenty <laughs> CCs of prayer. No, but he's like talking to this guy, and we assume was his pastor, who's like, you know, we're working on your spiritual health, Mark. And then he's just like, I'm looking at these CAT scan results, and they're not good. <laughs> what is going? But I think you had a good point though about what do what doctors are like in Middle America, because there are no Jewish doctors, no Jewish or Indian doctors or Chinese doctors. And it's just all local shit kickers who are okay. like yeah i'm a doctor so, like, okay, so then then the pastor doctor like uh refers him to another doctor and here's where the story really takes off he refers him to the office of dr colbert who from as best <laughs> i can tell again based on a real person who is like a dietitian <laughs> yeah he, not, has, like, he, has, he has keto diet shit in his like, office there are scenes in in the movie we're like positioned in between them as they're having a conversation is like a nice display table featuring the keto diet by Dr. Colbert. Like it's an ad, like native advertising in the movie. And uh, he's also like a, a spirit, half spiritual doctor. My view, vision of this is like, is this what medical care is like in the parts of the country where like there are no Jewish or South Asian doctors? Or there's not some like incredibly uh, competent, like, you know, like immigrant guy who's like a heart surgeon or whatever, or just like the classic Jewish doctor. Is it like, oh, do these people have medical I degrees? I want to like, make a movie about like where the worst Jewish doctor from New York moves to Missouri. Like they, they punish him by relocating to Missouri and he's just the best doctor they've ever seen. Yeah. Like the, like the patients are like, oh no, you're going to make, tell me to pray again. He's like, what? <laughs> Very much. My cousin Vinny. Yeah, he's like, what? Yeah, but it's not he, It's not through street smarts. It's just through basic medical knowledge. <laughs> he's like, we need to like disinfect the needles we use. <laughs> you can't like pray over them. And then the at, at, one point, at one point, he comes back from the prayer keto doctor and his wife's like, how'd it go? And he's just like, well, he's carrying two jugs of water. And he said, and he goes, well, the doctor told me to drink all this filtered water. And we were like, first of all, 
like filtered water, that's just like getting a Brita filter. I think well, he, he meant distilled water. Which and is, this doctor told him to drink two gallons of distilled water. Yeah, this is basically like his the better doctor he went to is basically like he met a Christian at GNC. <laughs> it's the same effect. So he's getting yeah, he's getting medical results. And then like uh he basically says to his prayer doctor, like, you know, I think God is telling you something with these nightmares. And again, his doctor is like, I think you may be onto something. Do you mind if I, I if I tell my wife about this? It should be clear right here. That he is originally in this house. How, how the sequence works? He's in a, a like a waiting room that could be like a doctor's office waiting room. There are people in scrubs. And yeah, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he walks through the door, and that cuts to a, a room in a clearly different building. That's just. It's like a psychiatrist's office, or no, no, it's like the set of a talk show, and there's just a big bookshelf with laid out this, you know, con artist fucking diet books. So he gets his distilled water diet, but like it really takes off when Dr. Colbert, uh, at some point uh, in like the plot of this movie, again, it's impossible to tell how time passes. It begins around 2005, and then he first has his prophecy in 2011, and then he writes it all down and then gives it to the doctor, like after Mitt Romney loses to Obama. And then, it, like his again, his doctor is like, I think there may be something here. Do you mind if I consult my wife on this? Um, she's also a a crackpot, um, unlicensed <laughs> spirit uh, witch doctor. Yeah, my doc, my wife actually works at Vitamin Shop. <laughs> yeah. I'm the manager yeah, of this but- GNC. My wife's the manager of Vitamin Shop. Together, <laughs> through our expertise, we're gonna figure something and out. And there was the funniest part in that scene. He was like, "Do you mind if I show this to my wife?" And he was like, "Well, sure, if you think it'll help." And he's like. Uh, Mary, could you come in here? Like, and then she just walks in the room, like she's just working out front as his receptionist or something. Well, I get okay. So in Middle America, the guy, like the doctor at the, ho- he's like the lord of the hospital, and then your wife, it's like that guy was one of the lords of the firehouse, and his wife was a lady of the firehouse. This is why all of these people are afraid of socialized medicine because they think it means you won't be able to uh, see your local crank doctor anymore. <laughs> like, I won't be able to see Doctor Johnson. He rides a horse. Well, that, that, oh, well, well that, good. That's why. No, 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 no. We should let like there. There should be an opt out for Medicare for all, and it should be like if you want to see your doctor who like who tells you you have to like do half of a seder to cure your cancer. If you want to see your doctor who's like, yeah, you just have to just walk into any bar mitzvah and touch the boy reading the Torah. Just touch him on the top of his head, and you'll gain his power, and you'll have no more shingles. Like, that's fine. If you want to see the doctor who sees you with his wife, like his wife cups one ball and he cups the other, that's fine. You don't have to be in Medicare for all. You can still pay that guy out of pocket. There should be crank insurance. Yeah. Like yeah. Should, yeah. United, well, that's what, that's what private insurance should, should cover. Right. It should be, right. United should only cover just like complete quacks. <laughs> Fucking psychos <laughs> who make you go on keto when you're 90. <laughs> like, but that's... That, I just love the guy fine. who's uh, been having a mental breakdown for the past 10 years has received zero adequate treatment for whatever <laughs> schizophrenic break he's currently having because of the fire he encountered that one time. Uh, and I just love the idea of like he's getting cat scans or whatever. And the guy's looking at it and he's like, hmm, I've been reading your diary while looking over at your medical charts. Uh my wife teaches uh, pottery at the local community college. You mind if she uh, takes a look at these uh, brain uh, X-rays? All right. So on one hand, this says that you your hormone, like you're like near fatal hormone <laughs> your catastrophe, thyroid and is you, cratering, and, yeah. and you have a tumor. But also, my wife has an Etsy, and we think we, you may be a prophet of God. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, well, let's you know, split the difference. Drink this water, okay? And let's <laughs> wait to see if Donald Trump becomes president. <laughs> So okay, he, sounds good. Uh, yeah, I don't want to take those doctors away from anyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, again, like uh, the the action in the movie really starts about an hour in, where the dietitian gives his wife a like manuscript copy of this guy's insane ramblings that he's been like scribbling in a fucking diary, uh, you know, after ten straight years of night terrors, and she reads it and she's like. I think there's something here. The funny this is she- a commander in chief prophecy, and it just it just has that rhythm that the Holy Spirit has. Is what she literally is what she says. You only ever hear like two lines from the fucking prophecy, and they are Donald Trump president question mark and the line about as Benjamin Netanyahu is to Israel, so too will this man be for America. That line is repeated three times in this movie. Damn, that's good writing. 
Yeah, the, and he is what Netanyahu is to is Israel. Like, they both have sons that we like. They both have cool sons. <laughs> they both have cool sons. They're both definitely not corrupt and yeah. under a million investigations. Yeah. And they're widely loved by everyone. Oh, yeah, they both lost them. the popular vote. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Did Netanyahu would lose a popular vote? Well, I mean, no. there's so many different parties. It's not like he got yeah. like a majority. Nobody anyone. gets more than yeah. like 20%. Yeah. And then I think at one point, like, the big climax to the, the fire, ex-firefighter story is the demon visits him. And, and like he sort of has an out of body experience where like he drifts up above himself while he's praying and fights the demon above his body floating in the bedroom by doing spirit writing and writes like no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That cool line. From yeah, the Bible. fans of the show Ghost Rider will appreciate <laughs> yeah. this callback. And uh, again, like I, I was just wa- seeing this shit is like in the colonial era and like uh, early modern Europe and shit where people would have like witch panics and people would go insane and like see the devil and like there was like the wide, widely known uh, phenomenon of like ergot poisoning, where like a like a f- crops would be uh, get like a fungus that mm. would cause uh, hallucinations and madness when ingested. And I just felt like this was like the modern suburban equivalent of that. Like are, we're gonna find out that like yeah, um, you know Bedford Hearts, Minnesota, or no uh, Missouri, where I guess the movie's supposed to take place was like under a giant seam of methane gas or yeah. something that was leaking into everyone's home. So. Your conclu- my our conclusion upon watching this movie is that probably about like at least sixty million Americans are just completely fucking insane. <laughs> yeah, they're at just least that. totally insane, and they think that like all their friends, like they think there's like a fifty percent chance of anyone they know being a prophet of God, <laughs> but their pro- <laughs> but their prophecies are all like. Ooh, I think I think God is telling me that um, Herman Cain is going to be on the Fed Governor's Board, like when the Chinese finally rescue the world, save us from global warming, and this is just like a colony of China, and they're studying us in three hundred years. You know what used to be here? They're going to exhume like a a skeleton from like suburban St. Louis or something, and they'll be like, "Oh my God, there were so many tumors in these brains!" <laughs> like just. I would say like about 30% of Americans have debilitating tumors that make them think that they're regularly visited by demons and angels and that, that that like their doctors clearly aren't helping. Their doctors are all people who are on like the Jim Baker show <laughs> yeah, who, yeah, who are yeah. like, oh, we, I got just the thing for you. Six minutes, six minute abs gets rid of leukemia like that. Like, and it just, it, and we're the most powerful country in the world, in the history of the, the world. The wealthiest country, too. We the can, most technologically advanced country. We can vaporize the planet like 20 times over. And like, yeah, about 30% of people are just beyond schizophrenic. Like, like I said, beyond. Like, this is just something else. I don't know what the fuck this is. Like, you have to see, you have to see the parts in this movie where this guy. He should probably like under like, an objective board of experts would look at this guy's life and be like, this guy should kill himself <laughs> until he's like, he just watches TV once and is like, Donald Trump's going to be president. And that wills him to live. And every medical expert he goes to is like, confirms this. Yeah. And that that's it. That's like the country that can kill all the other countries. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. That's I'll- great. Uh, he defeats a demon with spirit writing, and then his character pretty much goes away. And then it focuses mostly on the uh, the wife of the diet doctor that he went to treat his PTSD and demon visions uh, with. Uh, so the wife uh, is convinced uh, by reading this man's you know diary of a madman <laughs> that he has literally spoken to God and received this a prophecy. Is like, yeah, this is like if in The Shining, if Shelley Duvall read from the typewriter and was like, "Oh my God, he's right." <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. <laughs> So uh, and then she and then she her her big idea is to start basically um like a like a chain prayer email. It's a prayer conference. It's a prayer. No, she, she does a prayer conference call where it's like everyone. It's called the Nation Builders Prayer Call. It's basically like Christianity is like a multi level marketing scheme. Perfect. Where, where she gives, she calls all the pastors she knows who do prayer groups and get like thousands of people to dial into like one big party line. Where like they just pray for Donald Trump, and then best of all, she discovers shofars. She discovers the special Jewish ram's horn that they blew uh, as a sign of victory for their leaders, and she starts getting people to blow shofars into a phone. Yeah. So there are two parts about the shofar storyline I love. First, she gets like she employs all the nurses and doctors at her husband's <laughs> hospital to just go overtime buying shofar. This would be. 
the most sued hospital <laughs> ever. <laughs> like, could you imagine you just get MRSA because your nurse is on eBay haggling over a show yeah. bar so his boss's wife could pray for Donald Trump <laughs> with some other dickheads on the phone? That's healthcare for 50% of the country. Yeah. yeah. My Nima flatline <laughs> while the nurses were arranging a fucking chain email conference call for but, praying for Donald Trump. But then they do find the equivalent, like what these people are to Christians, they find the Jewish equivalent and they just get this fucking dipshit on Skype who's like, and uh, you know, you're blowing the shofar and whoever you blow it for, that's protection for him. God knows. You just blow it and uh, God's like, hey, I'll walk, I'll look out for this guy. Just to fuck, the, they found like a basically a Jewish evangelical who well, to Skype with them. Even before that point, so uh, there's a, uh, I guess this would be the technical low point of the film in screenwriting terms when they think, you know, oh, maybe Donald Trump isn't actually going to win. Maybe he's not going to win the primaries. And they show the only clip of Marco Rubio remotely doing well in a debate. Uh, just saying, you know, uh, you're a fucking con artist. You get all your shit from China. You got your shit from Mexico. You, uh, your fucking university is fake. It's a fake fucking university. And they're watching this, and they're, uh, the main character is watching this and going, you know, oh god, what if he doesn't win? And the wife's like, well, you know, the only thing we can do to make something happen is obey and pray. And I, and it hit us all. They never actually explain why they like Donald Trump no, at any no. point in this movie. There, there is, there is, it, like in 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 the film part of it, there is absolutely no discussion whatsoever of any political issue or or anything that would differentiate Trump from any of the other Republican candidates, let alone from the the Democratic ones. It's just you just get the the, the photo, you get a Reagan Bush eighty four bumper sticker on a fucking fishing boat, and that's it. The wife and her husband they never discuss politics. And then I think at one point they see Obama beat Romney and then like the, the firefighter guy says like, oh, he didn't even try to run or something. He's just mad that Romney was, you know, a cuck server. It's like they like Trump for the same reason a dog might. You know, he, oh, he barks real loud. Yeah, that. Yeah, it's just supposed to be Trump. Yeah, it's just supposed to be him for some reason. Oh, these are some interesting colors. They remind me of a <laughs> rabbit I could yeah. chase after. Yeah. So then, uh, okay, there's also a, a humorous scene of uh, the wife conducting a prayer conference call in an airline bathroom, in an airplane bathroom. And then, like, for some reason, everyone in the cabin can hear her being like, now let's get out there and pray for Donald Trump. And then there's like a, a near attendant figure who's like <laughs> off off three Zans and then orders like eight martinis because she's like I can't deal with it. I can't deal with this shit. Yeah, deal with it. one of these Christ fans. Yeah, one of these theists. She's posting on Reddit child free about how a Christ card ruined her flight. <laughs> yeah, the rest of this is just kind of a blur until we get to election night. Well, I mean, there's one really funny montage of like like uh, fake newspapers piling up. They're all like Hillary Clinton projected winner. You know, chances long for Donald Trump. And then Felix, you noticed that like. In the, you know, the Badger Bugle local paper, the byline at the top, like Hillary projected to win is from Bart Simpson. Yeah, li Bartholomew it's Simpson. It's Bartholomew Simpson. That was, yeah, that was by like, I, I guess like someone's nephew did uh, the, the graphic design for this the movie. Photoshop. He's like, yeah. oh, here's a little Easter egg for the cool kids that live in my subdivision. But this is just, it's just mostly a blur. Like, it's like, there's like a montage of different dumbasses blowing shofars that is assuredly yeah. real. That's on election day. They, and they all look like they're all doing it in like hollers. Like Raylan Givens is about to kill them if they don't drop that shofar. Uh, he's like, he's like, you got to ask yourself, can I unholster and fire this weapon before your lips blow through that shofar? I have to say the doctor, the doctor seemed like a one-off justified yeah, character. Yeah, like who, who, sells, like oxy, right, yeah. Who, sells, like, who sells people fent through shofars. <laughs> like he has fent patches sewn into shofars. The, and, Ray, and Gibbons is like, we found, you're not even a doctor. And he's like, I'm a man of God. And then Raylan kills him. And you're like, oh, that was a pretty good like early season episode. You never, but in this movie, he's a hero. It's election day. And all the campaigning that any of these people have done involved prayer conference calls. And then what I'm sure was spending weeks trying to acquire these horns that they all blow at once. And the, <laughs> it's the doctor, right? Who's wearing a prayer shawl? Yeah. And blowing a shofar? No, no, what? no. That was the schizophrenic Jew they found. Oh, that was a different that was the guy who yeah. was like, all right, let me tell you how to blow in it. And it's, uh, yeah, it's election night. And, you know, well, uh, everyone in the lying media is saying that Hillary is probably going to win. And there's a, a series of scenes where they're all just watching TV. And 
you know, oh, Obama, uh, uh, Trump wins North Carolina and Trump wins Florida. And it's like, oh, it's it's really happening. And they this is interspersed with like news footage and like uh, uh, hearing from the candidates on election night. And it just hit me. Oh, my God. The dumbest third of this country beat Hillary Clinton. It's still like she ate so much shit. This was literally like they had a billion dollars in data on every single living creature in America. And these people like they're only pl- like, first of all, everyone who voted for Trump hated each other. Like just different. Gr- like it was like baked Alaska, like do pussy popping on Hollywood Boulevard. I remember that being a campaign event to raise awareness for Donald Trump. And then like these people who they think are like Christ cucks and like all the organizing was either just like pointless flash mobs or raising awareness of pizza gate or like j- t- calling five people, you know, and telling them to call five people. They know to all blow your horns at the same time. <laughs> that was it. And it worked. It literally worked. It- it's probably the greatest thing that's ever happened. Did they that ever these do fucking people? Did that campaign ever have like a single person canvas for them? Did they ever go door to door and try and say anything other than, you know, uh, Anna Wintour has been very unfair to public yeah, like, candidate like, Trump. Like, like, yeah, I remember them being like, Jared Kushner actually ran a great data operation. And it was like, was he just helping people buy shofars? Is that what they mean? <laughs> like, what? This is it. This is all we saw in this movie is it. It was just all like, horrifyingly manicured people with zanned out eyes calling each other on the phone and being like, we all need to kneel in submission to benediction of the Holy Spirit speaking th- just word salad nonsense. It's <laughs> Harry Potter just shit. not in the Bible. And they did it. They're all just Props. watching TV and praying. That's all they do <laughs> yeah, the yeah. entire time. And they admit, well, you know, you can't change anything. My, you just have to pray. Here's what you I'm, never see them, like, make a phone call that says, or uh, knock hey, on remember door, the door or, like, or donate to there Trump. Are prob- there are I... Don't know this for a fact, but it's probably true. Two Trump voters, potential Trump voters, probably shot and killed each other during the one time they tried knocking on doors. <laughs> <laughs> like they both drew their weapons at the same time. As far as they're concerned, elections are just decided by magic and they still won. Well, it was okay. This is very biblical. This is Exodus. This is the power of Yahweh, which is getting the horn and telling all your friends to blow on it, versus the power of the pharaohs, the magicians, which is sacrificing babies to get adrenochrome there and you go Yahweh wins again forget so about strong. forget about all, so the, all the Selena Zito bullshit yeah he won because of the magic horns why not that makes as much sense as anything yeah. I mean well, she I, she honestly should review people who blew into, she should interview everyone who bought a horn that's a way better article than like talking to like a boat like a fucking yeah boating supply store owner I'm curious if anyone out there knows a horn blower I want. I bet there's a guy like you know how like sometimes we'll do an episode where we'll, yeah we'll make fun of like Jeff Jacoby and someone will be like they're like replying to like this guy commiserating about how we mocked him and he, he they'll be like well I'm a fan of you both but I really don't like how they address this and be like, <laughs> what I want to meet I want I, we're gonna see we're gonna get this email from someone's like hey I really love the show you guys I've been a subscriber <laughs> since 2016 but. I was actually one of the people who blew the horn for <laughs> Donald Trump, and I don't really think you guys understand where I was coming from. There's, I would love to talk to that person. There's that person's well out there. over 100 million people in this country who believe they talk to angels regularly. <laughs> they voted for Donald Trump, and they, 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 he won, and, it, and they watch movies like this, and it's just, like, it's, like, it's just the most dog brain bullshit, and it, and it still staggers me that, the, like you said... People at the DNC or the Hillary Clinton campaign who have a billion dollars and like the most this sophisticated data operation and all this micro targeting information about every single consumer in the country can't just trick these people somehow. Can't just jangle their keys in front of them. I mean, I literally think if you were just like, we found a new God, he's stronger than Christ. Like it would at least half of them would come over. And that's really all you need. If you just split half of them between their God and the new one, that's. You can do that. Just make stuff up. It doesn't matter. You know, uh, Islam, it's just a it's a sequel to Christianity. It's a reboot. It's great. You'll love it. Uh, one of my favorite parts, though, towards the end of this movie is that when it finally does come back with the uh, the retired firefighter and prophet, it's like him and his wife. Are, first of all, like 
almost every other scene of which he's not in bed in his pajamas, he's sitting on like a barca lounger with a quilt over his lap. Like he's some old person who's like, it's drafty in here. I'm cold. You know, the prophecy has not been kind <laughs> yeah. to him. The prophecy has weighed on his it's, body and mind heavily. It's ravaged him mentally and physically. One of the worst and things him that could have happened to him. Him and his wife are, again, they have... Him and his wife have like had no physical contact at all in this movie, aside sleeping next to each other. And they're watching the returns come in. And like the 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 dietitian and his wife are like, oh boy, we won Florida. Keep praying. We're almost there. And then it just cuts to the next morning. And the firefighter went to sleep before he knew Donald Trump was going to be president. Oh, God. That's not, I mean, I guess he knew it was going to happen. So he was just like, well, no surprises here for me. I, but what, when he gets, when, when his he wife, gets up, yeah. his, wife, his wife is like, honey, honey, you won't believe it. He's like, well, obviously I do believe it. I'm the fucking prophet who yeah, made this happen. He, but he reacts like his wife is like, guess who I ran in today? Shelly. Yeah, no. So <laughs> he, he, yeah, his wife wakes him up. He's like, honey, honey, you won't believe it. And he's just like, oh, half asleep. Oh, what is it? And she's like, Hillary Clinton conceded Donald Trump's president. And you're right. He reacts like she said, honey, honey, you'll never believe it. You'll never guess what happened. It's a miracle. Crest has a new flavor of toothpaste that I bought you. And then he's just like, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> great. And then just goes back to sleep. Like he's totally unmoved by the fact he, it has literally <laughs> been confirmed in his brain that not only is God real and sends messages directly to his brain, but like it's correct. Like they're like it's all real, and he's just like, oh great. You know what? That's a cool guy. <laughs> That's dude. You know what we always say, act like you've been here before. That's true. That guy definitely acted like he'd been a prophet before. Uh, and then the movie just ends. There's no more about him being a prophet or whatever his future prophecies. Yeah, he's are. had a really bad post prophecy career. I guess no one really has a great post prophecy career after a few figures, but. He, there are very few Muhammads and uh, Solomons and a lot of just. He had like, a great pro prophet career. He conquered like you know all of North Africa and middle of the Middle East. Kicked yeah. ass, yeah. but uh, this guy just goes on like radio shows called like the polit the politically incorrect hangout with just like two two guys named Jim. And they're like, we're, we're talking to a man who has spoken to God. <laughs> if you listen to this actual God, he's not this. He's not the flat just dullard he's just like a bumbling dip he's like hi right, hey how you doing yeah, it's me <laughs> hey, hey brother hey, great, well, great to be talking yeah, prophecy yeah, again with you yes i'm a terrestrial being who can communicate with god he just but it, that's what's funny is if he truly believes that he talked to god he's a pretty cool guy because he talked to the being the ultimate being and he still just comes off as a guy who like you're in line with him at home depot and he's like huh it's gonna get real hot this week <laughs> and it's like you've talked to god what if that you is have proof of eternal life like god favors you what if that is just all of his prophecies now like god comes down and through an angel tells him it's gonna be hot this week yeah. hey, and it's hey, gonna be a scorch well, hey t hey turn on the classic rock station if you like the song cashmere <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> and they're like he's just like 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 the, like the valis signal is going directly into his brain be like you like that led zepp song Turn on the radio. You may be surprised. He's sitting in the car with his wife. Just turns it on. Turn on her. Turn on her. Turn on her. He's like, yep. See? Got the guy got the God. Got the God power. Yeah. They talk. <laughs> God God comes on like one of those like shitty MAGA. He comes on like your voice radio. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I don't know. I just like this guy. He's like a cool guy. He's well, humble. He's like, yeah, I've had a lot of prophets before and they all turned out. They're just like really just like self sat just like narcissistic or like just self-destructive like moses he didn't have to do all the stuff he did but this guy he's just a chill guy so i help him out uh one of my favorite parts though towards the end of this movie is that when it finally does come back with the uh the retired firefighter and prophet it's like him and his wife are first of all like almost every other scene of which he's not in bed in his pajamas he's sitting on like a barca lounger with a quilt over his lap like he's some old person and he's like it's drafty in here i'm cold you know the prophecy has not been kind <laughs> yeah. to him the prophecy has weighed on his <laughs> body and mind heavily. it's ravaged him mentally and physically one of the worst and things him that could have happened to him him and his wife are again they have him and his wife have like had no physical contact at all in this movie aside sleeping next to each other and they're watching the returns come in and like the, the the dietitian and his wife are like, oh boy, we won Florida. Keep praying. We're almost there. And then it just cuts to the next morning. 
And the firefighter went to sleep before he knew Donald Trump was going to be president. Good God. That's not, I mean, I guess he knew it was going to happen. So he was just like, well, no surprises here for me. But when he gets up, when, but when his he wife, gets up, yeah. his wife is like, honey, honey, you won't believe it. He's like, well, obviously I do believe it. I'm the fucking prophet who yeah, made this happen. He, but he reacts like his wife is like, Guess who I ran in today? Shelly. Yeah, no. So his, his <laughs> wife, yeah, his wife wakes him up. She's like, honey, honey, you won't believe it. And he's just like, oh, half asleep. Oh, what is it? And she's like, D Hillary Clinton conceded. Donald Trump's president. And you're right. He reacts like she said, honey, honey, you'll never believe it. You'll never guess what happened. It's a miracle. Crest has a new flavor of toothpaste yeah. that I bought you. And then he's just like, huh? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> great. And then just goes back to sleep. Like he's totally unmoved by the fact he it has literally been <laughs> confirmed in his brain that not only is god real and sends messages directly to his brain but like it's correct like they're like it's all real and he's just like oh great you know what that's a cool guy <laughs> that's dude you know what we always say act like you've been here before that's true that guy definitely acted like he'd been a prophet before uh and then the movie just ends there's no more about him being a prophet or whatever his future prophecies yeah, are. He's had a really bad post-prophecy career. I guess no one really has a great post-prophecy career after a few figures, but he there are very few Muhammads and uh, Solomons and a lot of just... He had like, a great post-prophet career. He conquered like you know all of North Africa and the middle of the Middle East. He kicked yeah. ass, yeah. but uh, this guy just goes on like radio shows called like the, politi the Politically Incorrect Hangout with just like two two guys named jim and they're like we're, we're talking to a man who has spoken to god <laughs> if you listen to this actual god he's not this he's not the flat just dullard he's just like a bumbling dip he's like hi hey how you doing yeah, it's me <laughs> hey, hey brother hey, great, well, great to be talking yeah, prophecy yeah, again with you yes i'm a terrestrial being who can communicate with god he just but it, that's what's funny is if he truly believes that he talked to god he's a pretty cool guy because he talked to the being, the ultimate being, and he still just comes off as a guy who, like, you're in line with him at Home Depot, and he's like, huh, it's going to get real hot this week. <laughs> and it's like, you've talked to God. What if that you is? You have proof of eternal life. Like, God favors you. What if that is just all of his prophecies now? Like, God comes down and through an angel tells him it's going to be hot this week. Yeah. Hey, and hey, it's going to hey, be a scorch. Well, hey, hey, t hey, turn on the classic rock station if you like the song Cashmere. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, he's just like, 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 like the, like the Valis signal is going directly into his brain. Be like, you like that Led Zepp song? Turn on the radio. You may be surprised. You sit in the car with his wife, just turns it on. He's like, yep, see? Got the, <laughs> guy got the god got the god power yeah they talk <laughs> god god comes on like one of those like shitty maga he comes on like your voice radio <laughs> he's like yeah i don't know i just like this guy he's like a cool guy he's well, humble he's like yeah i've had a lot of prophets before and they all turned out they're just like really just like self sat just like narcissistic or like just self-destructive like moses he didn't have to do all the stuff he did but this guy, he's just a chill guy, so I help him out. The movie just ends, and then we have this thing that 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 this this is a, a feature of all of these fucking movies: the D'Souza movie, the Glenn Beck movies, like like all of these uh, Christian right wing movies always have uh, a montage at the end where it's just they edit together stock footage of Mount Rushmore, uh, San Francisco, New York, Sodom and Gomorrah. I would imagine, but like an eagle flying over an American flag. And like kids having fun on a beach, fireworks, fireworks shit like that. But unique to this one, there, it, 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 you know, interspersed throughout that patriotic montage was just people showing framed photos of veterans that are in their family. Which is weird because they never talk about veterans in this movie. They're just kind of throwing together all kinds of like really simplistic Americana shit. And it was just like, yeah, they just people are smiling and looking photos of like you know. This is my father. He was in the Navy. He died of heart disease when he was 80. But like, you know. Yeah. I, I, they're just, it just felt like they're just throwing shit at the wall by the end of it. Like, hey, you fucking hogs love this shit, huh? Well, here's what I, here's what I love to think about after seeing this movie. Uh, like we said, you know, nobody thought, you know, Trump was going to be president. It seemed totally unlikely. But, you know, a miracle did happen. And like you said, Felix, I like thinking that, like, this guy is the real deal. <laughs> That like he literally is a prophet of God and that God used him to get the prayer conference call and the shofar party that made it possible so that his power could elect Donald Trump. 
I really like thinking that that's 100% real and that my worldview is diametrically opposed to reality. God is 100% real. He talks to people all the time. Angels visit like boat dealers in Bump in Missouri all the time to give them messages <laughs> from the great beyond. It's all real. I love thinking that because it's just like, oh, wow, I'm still correct in not believing in God because he's a huge asshole and a moron. No, 